Welcome to Plug Life Television. Today is a special day because we're launching a new series of the show. You'll be familiar by now with the Under the Bonnet series that looks at electric vehicle and battery misconceptions and dispels many of the common myths that are out there. But today we're going to be launching the Plug Life Manifesto series, which presents some pragmatic policies that could be put in place to try and hasten the decarbonisation of energy and transport. Today we're going to be looking at the thorny and contentious issue of air travel and seeing if there is a way that Scotland and the rest of the world could make it green. Recently in Scotland, there's been talk of expanding Edinburgh Airport's capacity by adding new flight routes. This has understandably resulted in a large number of objections from nearby residents on noise and pollution grounds, as well as serious concerns about the acceleration of climate change. There are similar arguments surrounding the third runway at Heathrow and the expansion of other airports around the world. Given that there are multiple environmental concerns surrounding airport expansion, when it comes to the question of whether or not airports should be allowed to expand at all, the Plug Life Manifesto stance says, yes you can. Hear me out. The condition for allowing airport expansion is that it can only be done using electric flight. In recent years, industry and academia have accelerated research and development in next generation lithium cells which are a significant evolution of the lithium-ion batteries that we know today. Solid-state lithium cells employ a solid electrolyte which is ionically conductive, electrically insulating and dendrite-proof. These properties allow the electrolyte to double as the separator, thus removing a component found in a lithium-ion cell, and the associated cost and bulk. Solid electrolyte also allows pure lithium foil to be used as the anode, which significantly increases energy density. Solid state lithium cells offer a two to three fold increase in energy density over commercial lithium ion cells, pushing them over the 400 watt hours per kilogram threshold recommended by many industry experts for battery powered flight. Early versions of solid state cells are already being used in commercial drones. Lithium sulfur cells are also of interest to the aerospace industry due to their high gravimetric energy density, that is, the amount of energy that can be stuffed into them per kilogram, as well as their tolerance of pressure changes. Oxus Energy are currently constructing a lithium sulfur cell factory in Brazil. Encouraged by the latest battery developments in the lab, there is already a strong interest from airlines in electrified commercial flight. EasyJet plans to introduce short-haul electric flights by 2030, and Norway plans to make all short-haul flights electric by 2040. Closer to home, Logan Air plans to introduce an all-electric island hopping flight service on Orkney by 2021. Therefore, the appetite is there from commercial airlines to electrify their fleets. Electrification of flights is a particularly green proposition in Scotland. Scotland is a net exporter of electricity that obtained over 68% of its electricity from renewables in 2017 and shut down its last coal-fired power plant in 2016. In November 2018, wind power alone produced 109% of Scotland's electricity demand. Orkney has so much renewable energy that it cannot export it all to the mainland via its grid interconnect so it uses excess renewable energy to produce hydrogen, which is less efficient than using it to charge batteries of electric planes. As our renewable energy capacity continues to expand, the source of electricity for all electric flights shall continue to become greener. We needn't rapid charge electric planes within the space of a 20 to 30 minute airport turnaround, a practice which places high demand on the grid, regardless of the national grid demand and energy mix. For standardised fleets of planes with standardised equipment, battery swapping makes perfect sense. Batteries could be slowly trickle charged overnight or when demand is low, or using dynamic tariffs which react to the wholesale price of electricity, which in turn is often linked to the amount of renewables on the grid. This practice reduces instantaneous demand on the grid whilst maximising the use of renewable energy and also improves the lifespan of the battery pack by charging it at a lower current. Fully charged batteries would then be swapped into a plane when it arrives at the airport. Furthermore, the batteries could be used as grid storage whilst awaiting their next turn in a plane, being used to supply electricity to the grid at peak times when the wholesale electricity price is high, as long as they are fully charged again by the time they are required for use in a plane, thus providing an additional revenue stream to the airline. Another advantage of electric flight is that it delivers a genuinely green economic boost. Such as the low cost of renewable electricity, Electric flights are not only cleaner than conventional flights, but also more profitable, allowing more flights a day to be run to remote communities and delivering a much needed boost to their economy. In Scotland, airports such as Wick and Kirkwall, and the communities that they serve, could see significant improvements. 
as many skilled workers in the renewable sector who may have been deterred by the remoteness of these locations now choose to commute to jobs in these communities from Scotland's cities each day, or to live in these areas because there is now a clean, affordable and regular flight service to Scotland's major cities. What's more, Electric Flight presents an opportunity to revive Glasgow Prestwick Airport, which was rescued by the Scottish Government and has failed to attract and retain flight routes, despite having the best rail connection of any of Scotland's airports. The airport could become a hub for all electric flights to Scotland's remotest communities, as well as having electric short-haul flights to England, Ireland and Wales. A large grid storage battery bank, comprised of plain batteries, could provide storage for nearby renewables projects such as Whiteley Wind Farm. It goes without say that removing jet or internal combustion engine based propulsion systems from an aircraft will make them considerably quieter. This will allow airports to run new flight paths without disturbing nearby residents, and to introduce a 24 hour departure and arrival schedule, thus expanding their capacity without expanding their runways. The technology that is available to us today will already allow some short haul flights on smaller aircraft to be electrified and the technology that will be available by 2025 will facilitate the electrification of most internal flights in Scotland and some short-haul flights to Europe. With this in mind, the Plug Life Manifesto on air travel is as follows. Any flights that are scheduled to depart or arrive out with the schedule at airports as of the date of the policy's implementation, i.e. earlier in the morning, later in the evening or overnight, shall be fully electric. Any proposed flight paths that fly over residential areas that do not currently have a flight path above them shall be used by fully electric aircraft only. Any new runways at airports shall only be used by electric aircraft. All internal flights shall be fully electric by 2040. And Prestwick Airport shall be relaunched as an electric only air hub for passenger services with routes serving Scotland's remotest communities. The goal for the Plug Life Manifesto on air travel is for it to be adopted by every political party in Holyrood, since the policy appeals to all sides of the political spectrum. It's good for business, it's good for innovation, good for communities that live near airports, and good for the environment. So there we go, Scotland is already in a position to decarbonise and electrify some of its flight paths today, particularly when it comes to island hopping services. And as the battery technology improves, we'll see even more electric flight paths opening up within Scotland and to other nations as well. And the big advantage of the Plug Life Manifesto stance is that it encourages airlines to put their money where their mouth is and to invest in these R&D programmes that we're seeing within the aerospace industry, within universities, to get the new battery technology into electric aircraft as soon as possible. Because if those airlines want to run more services, if they want to run new flight paths, they need to be electric and they need to invest in that tech now to get it here ASAP. It's a win-win. Something else that's interesting is that whilst I was making this programme, this happened. North Scotland started producing all of its electricity demands from renewable energy. Now admittedly it was a Saturday, but it was during the day everyone was up and about. So you know, there was a fair amount of demand on the grid, and it just shows how possible it is. Scotland has an abundance of renewable energy resources, both wind and hydro, and increasingly we're starting to see developments in marine energy too. So there is every possibility that electric flight can be truly green, and in fact in Scotland it will be truly green. And it also shows that it's beneficial for energy security. We don't need to import oil, and admittedly, Scotland has its own oil reserves just now, but unlike the wind, the waves, unlike the rain, this isn't something that's going to be around forever. But even if you're of a political persuasion that means that you want to maximise oil revenue within Scotland's reserves, it means that by using electric flight, you're reducing oil demand within Scotland, which means you've got even more oil and oil products to export to other nations, which means you make even more money out of it. It's a win-win for everyone. Well, I look forward to hearing everyone's feedback on this particular part of the Plug Life Manifesto. Feel free to give us some feedback in the comments sections below. And if you like that policy, feel free to share it far and wide. I look forward to seeing this being discussed by many different political parties, not just in Scotland, but beyond as well, because it is something that is technologically possible already, and it's going to become even more viable within the next few years with even more amazing advancements in battery tech coming online. So I look forward to hearing your feedback on that soon. I'll see you again soon for another episode of Plug Life Television.